Mr. by thanking the organizer, especially Giovanni. And uh, I need to apologize for the change of my title. Uh, very sorry. So uh, I would like to talk about the boundary effects on the spin texture. So here is a list of collaborators, uh, especially my friend in Riken, who is uh, uh, Jan Marcel, who was uh, uh, Dr. Mira previously, but he got uh, married and uh, changed the family name. So this uh, Jan is the main player of this talk. And another uh, theoretical colleague is uh, Wataru Koshibai in Riken. And actually I have a lot of uh, uh, cross collaboration with the experimental people, especially uh, Professor Yu, uh, Wu San is the most uh, important uh, figure in this work. So let me start. So actually I listed the four uh, aspects of uh, boundary effects on the spin textures. So the one is uh, uh, near the boundary, uh, we have uh, nucleations of uh, spin textures. And the second, uh, sometimes uh, uh, some particular spin textures are stabilized by the boundary. And the thirdly, uh, sometimes the acceleration of the motion of the spin texture appears uh, near the boundary. And also, on the other hand, uh, the block the motion of the spin texture uh, occurs at the boundary. So I would like to discuss about these uh, four uh, items. Uh, from the viewpoint of the theory. Okay, so this is a little bit the old story, but uh, let me remind you about the effect of the boundary for the uh, scamion motion. Uh, actually, here is the boundary of a uh, sample, and uh, we put the current uh, perpendicular to uh, this uh, uh, boundary. And then uh, if we measure the uh, velocity, or uh, velocity of the scamions, along this uh, edge, then uh, the uh, velocity could be much, much uh, higher than the uh, scamion velocity induced by the current density in the bulk, right? So this enhancement could be quite uh, useful for applications. Actually, uh, this uh, enhancement has been uh, founded, discovered uh, theoretically first by uh, Dr. Felt and the Cross uh, group but the later we formulated this in terms of uh, TD equations. Another effect of the boundary is a uh, potential barrier for the motion of a uh, scamion. So here is a potential profile of a scamion as a function of the distance from the, uh, from the boundary. So without the uh, uh, jarsinski moria interaction, there is no uh, potential barrier. But once we have uh, this uh, data, namely the jarsinski moria interaction, we have a potential barrier, something like that. And then this is a simulation of a motion near the boundary of a uh, sample, right? And uh, if the current density is uh, not enough, then it will be a bounce back. But once the current density increases and above the critical uh, value, and then uh, the scamion will disappear uh, from the edge of the sample. So these are analyzed in the T equation uh, because uh, Vs is a uh, uh, spin transfer torque effect coming from the uh, current, spin current, and the Vd is the uh, uh, velocity of the magnetization texture. And the F is a force acting on the spin texture and uh, beta and alpha are uh, so-called uh, uh, dissipation terms. Alpha is a given damping, and beta is a uh, non-adiabatic uh, effect. And uh, uh, this uh, G is the most important, uh, which is a gyro vector, and uh, this uh, uh, G is given by the uh, scamion number. And uh, this uh, gyro dynamics is uh, uh, characteristic of uh, scamions, right? And then solving this under the influence of a boundary, uh, namely the confining force, then the uh, velocity along the, uh, along the edge is given by this expression. So the most characteristic is this uh, one over alpha factor, uh, which uh, enhances the velocity from the uh, bulk to the uh, edge. And another aspect is that uh, the critical velocity or critical uh, velocity here 
is almost independent of alpha. So this enhancement is one of alpha factor. But uh, this uh, critical uh, current density beyond which you disappear, destroy the scarmion, uh, push it out of the sample, uh, is the same uh, velocity, right? So that could be also understood uh, from the Tilde equation, namely the uh, critical velocity VDX is given by the maximum force coming from the potential barrier near the uh, boundary. So these are quite well understood from the uh, Tilde equation, near, uh, namely the motion of uh, scamion near the boundary. Okay, so let me turn to the more recent uh, studies on the effect of the uh, uh, boundary on the scamion motion. So this is in collaboration with the uh, experimental people uh, in Wiken. And uh, here is a new maker simulation. Uh, before doing that, uh, let me explain the experimental result. So actually, here is a finite size sample, and they put the current, and then uh, noise spectrum like that. And uh, uh, below some critical current density, uh, the noise spectrum is rather featureless. And then in this intermediate regime, so you have some uh, uh, accumulation near the zero frequency and some signature uh, of this peak. And uh, above this, then you have a very well-defined sharp peak. Actually, this one should correspond to the so-called uh, uh, washboard uh, potential. Uh, this is quite similar to the uh, corrective uh, pinning of uh, charge density wave and spin density wave. But uh, uh, if you look at the frequency range, this is uh, around 60 hertz. So actually this is uh, too low compared with the uh, uh, velocity uh, estimated from the current density. So then the uh, question is, what is the uh, late determining process of this corrective motion of a scamion crystal? So then uh, we went to the uh, simulation. And then we put the open boundary condition here and the appreciable uh, number of uh, uh, impurity potential here. And then this is a quite uh, uh, disorganized, disordered uh, scamion uh, crystal. But the most important is here is a uh, uh, boundary. And uh, uh, this uh, scamion Annihilation occurs uh, rather uh, quite sensitive uh, as a function of temperature, right? So here is a, a plot of uh, scamion uh, motion versus the temperature. Uh, we take a ratio between the periodic boundary condition and the open boundary condition. So then uh, this uh, ratio uh, gives you the reduction of uh, uh, scamion velocity as a function of temperature, right? So then uh, this uh, uh, process uh, near the uh, boundary is uh, quite sensitive to the uh, temperature. And if you reduce the temperature, then this ratio could be uh, very small. So uh, this is a, a manifestation of the fact that the rate determining uh, process of the uh, finite size scamion crystal is uh, given by the uh, disappearance and also annihilation and also the creation of a scamion at the uh, boundary of the sample. And uh, this is an uh, explanation why the washboard potential is uh, so uh, low frequency compared with the uh, uh, velocity estimated for the bulk motion. So this is one uh, piece of work. And uh, let me go to the next topics, uh, which is uh, uh, helix. Uh, I'm sorry that this is not the uh, scamion, but uh, some uh, uh, related spin texture, right? So the reason why we are so interested in the uh, helical structure is the following. So uh, as a function of uh, 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 unit vector of the magnetization, uh, we can define the effective magnetic field and also the effective electric field, which we call the uh, emergent electromagnetic field, 
uh, given by the very phase of the uh, spin structure. And actually, uh, if we apply uh, this uh, formula to the corrective motion of a helix, which is given by, sorry, this uh, equation motion, x is uh, uh, this uh, translational motion of a helix, and the phi is a tilting angle from this uh, rotating plane of the spin, right? And then Vp is a pinning potential, and uh, uh, this uh, k perpendicular is the uh, uh, spin anisotropy energy uh, uh, of a uh, uh, system. And uh, P is a spin polarization, and J is a current. Lambda is a pitch of the helix, right? And then if I apply the uh, DC current into this uh, helical structure, then it will uh, produce the voltage drop which is proportional to the time derivative of the current. So then this is nothing but the uh, uh, inductor. So the proposal here is that once we have this helix structure, right, and apply the AC current, so it will act as an uh, inductor. So this could be a quite useful application uh, for the electronics. So that's why uh, we are now quite interested in the uh, dynamics of uh, helix under the current driven. Okay, so that's why we uh, go to the uh, numerical simulation of uh, uh, helix under the current. So for that time being, uh, we apply the DC current, right, instead of uh, AC current, and uh, increase uh, uh, time uh, along this direction. So we, uh, what we are interested in is the direction of the momentum Q, wave number Q, under the influence of the current. So I put the current in this direction. So the uh, spin current, electron flow is going this way. So then <clears throat> uh, starting from uh, this uh, multi-domain uh, configuration and uh, put the current, then there is a change of the uh, Q vectors. So in the case of uh, uh, periodic boundary condition, uh, interestingly, the Q vector will align parallel to the current, right? Because uh, uh, this is a, a, a spin uh, direction. Uh, namely, this line is uh, perpendicular to the uh, wave number Q because it is given by this configuration, right? But uh, once we have an open boundary condition, namely the effect of the boundary is uh, quite important to align the uh, helix Q uh, which is perpendicular to the current direction. And namely, along this uh, uh, current direction, the spin is uh, almost parallel to each other. So then let me explain why such a difference uh, appears. So by the way, uh, this is a quite uh, standard Hamiltonian for the Jarosinski moria ferromagnet, and uh, we just uh, uh, simulate the uh, LLG equations. Okay, so here is a, a simulation. This is for the open boundary condition. And if we run the simulation, from this edge, you create the uh, very well-ordered uh, helix like that. And eventually, all the system becomes the monodomain. of the helix with a Q vector perpendicular to the direction of the current. But uh, when we increase the current density furthermore, this uh, right panel, right? So here is a uh, current density and here is a time. So you can see similar helix appears from the left boundary. But furthermore, as you can see, here is a, oh, sorry. Sorry.
yeah, eventually it becomes unstable. And we have uh, quite a uh, uh, chaotic situations for the higher density uh, of uh, current. As for the ordering, actually, uh, Dr. Wu already observed experimentally uh, the current induced ordering of a Q vector uh, in this uh, TEM images very recently. But uh, for the periodic boundary condition, the situation is quite different. So there is no boundary in this case. Right? And then the Q vector direction is uh, perpendicular from the open boundary condition. Namely, the Q vector is parallel to the current. So here is a, a image of the very curvature, time dependence. As you can see, blue one and red one is uh, going up or down opposite directions. So namely, in this periodic boundary condition case, so the motion of the defect is essential, uh, which climb up or climb down along the helix, which will order the uh, direction of the Q vectors. And eventually the Q vector becomes uh, parallel to the current. So that's why the bulk property and the edge properties are quite uh, different for the uh, helix motion under the current. And, uh, even more, for the very high current density, uh, both cases, uh, we have a uh, quite uh, disordered uh, configurations. So actually we can analyze uh, this phenomena uh, from the viewpoint of uh, uh, linear instability analysis of uh, helix and the under the current. So the, uh, this imaginary part of the uh, frequency for the uh, vibrational mode becomes uh, negative. Namely, there is an uh, instability. So this instability is uh, uh, always there for the finite current density. But uh, the time scale for the instability becomes uh, very long for the uh, small current density. But if you increase that, then you can quickly uh, make a, a disorder of a helix. So that's why the helix structure under the current has an uh, intrinsic instability. So with the remaining five minutes, uh, let me go to the skarmion string motion. And uh, with the finite thickness sample, the skarmion becomes a uh, string. And sometimes uh, we have a so-called monopole like that. This is the end point of a skarmion string in the three-dimensional structure. So then you can define the two kinds of a topological index. So the one is a skarmion number, which is defined for the two-dimensional uh, plane. And the other is a monopole number defined in the bulk. But in that case, we need to make a closed surface enclosing the singular point, namely the monopole point. So these are two topological numbers are uh, uh, quite important for the dynamics of the skarmion strings. So here uh, we have a step edge of a finite thickness sample. Then we drive the uh, skarmion by current. So here you can see that near this uh, step edge, the skarmion tube or a skarmion string will stick. Right? This uh, step edge is uh, preferable for the, for the skarmion string, right? So this is what we observed. And uh, if we look at the uh, distribution of the B normal for the developed surface, then this is always uh, quantized. The skarmion number is minus one, like that. So this gives, you, uh, gives us the idea that if you ex develop this uh, uh, step edge to the 
two-dimensional uh, flat surface, then the uh, skarmion number is conserved. So that's why this uh, uh, skarmion number for the surface of the sample is a quite useful concept for this uh, generalized uh, surface. But uh, then when we increase the uh, step edge size, this uh, uh, height of uh, step edge, then something interesting happens. Namely, the skarmion string is uh, split into the pieces, right? Let me repeat. Yeah, this cut the uh, skarmion string into the two pieces. So correspondingly, we plot the distribution of the B normal for this uh, developed surface. So then this uh, skarmion anti-skarmion appears, right? But uh, this uh, uh, total skarmion number for the surface is conserved. But eventually, because the skarmion string will disappear, right? Then this will disappear. So let me repeat. First, we have a split of a string into the two pieces. Right? And the scammy or anti scammy on the half is appears. And eventually disappears. But here, because of the uh, this uh, attractive force, so it will go up because of the uh, gyro dynamics of uh, scammy and the anti scammy. So this is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, consistent with a two-dimensional skarmion motion, but uh, it occurs for the uh, end point of a uh, skarmion string. Okay, so here the conclusion is that there are two kinds of uh, uh, topological number. One is a skarmion number on the surface for the top and bottom surface, and the other is a monopole number in the bulk. So these are two are uh, always uh, related to each other. Uh, this uh, three-dimensional uh, bulk monopole number is uh, some of the uh, two surface camion numbers like that. So uh, the conservation of this uh, relationship determine the dynamics of uh, scamion string with uh, finite thickness. So another interesting aspect is uh, 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 appears when the magnetic field is uh, La last minutes. Okay, yeah, I will finish shortly. Okay, so in that case, sometimes uh, here is a string, scamion string, but uh, you can see this structure, namely, as I mentioned, the uh, scamion is uh, stabilized near the surface. So that's why uh, this uh, string sometimes uh, ends up ends at the surface like that. So uh, this structure becomes a, a metastable configuration, even though the magnetic field is in parallel. So there are other uh, variety of uh, topological defects observed uh, in the numerical simulation. So uh, that's all what I want to say. So there are four aspects of uh, uh, boundary effect on the spin texture like that. So let me finish here. Thank you very much.